review, ninjas were cruising the streets of Miami on motorcycles. In this review, the ninjas say, fuck the motorcycles, and just fly across China. You might be all like, god damn, Garbage Man, you ever gonna review a movie without a ninja in it? And I'd be all like, yeah, well, if the movies I review don't give a shit about placing ninjas in the right geography, why should I give a wet fart in regards to how many of my reviews they populate? Duel to the Death is a motherfucking epic kung fu classic. Trust me, when I use the word epic, its meaning is anything but prosaic. And if you don't believe me... Hang on in there, you'll find out. Yeah, you use prosaic in a sentence, I'm so smart. The movie opens with ninjas doing the kind of shit you'd expect ninjas to do. Shit like running, jumping, clinging to walls, but mostly just a lot of ninja book reading. God damn, little black fuckers sure do read fast. As your body grows bigger, your mind grows slower, it's great to learn, cause knowledge is power. These sneaky little bastards aren't actually reading books, rather they're searching for Shaolin Kung Fu secrets to steal. It looks like when they find what they're looking for, they like dump some anthrax or fucking ricin or some shit all over these wooden scrolls and then they bounce. Oh, too late ninjas, looks like the Shaolin monks are onto you. Meanwhile, in the upper levels of Shaolin, Ching Wan is meditating with the venerable monks of the temple. The oldest and crustiest monk can tell Ching Wan really wants to kill himself some ninji. And as soon as he gives the blessing, this guy like flies backwards like 50 fucking feet all the while sitting in Indian style. Goes through a fucking wall and then just goes to wushu fighting all over the fucking place. Ching Wan's kung fu goes so hard he drives the ninjas back to the beach almost immediately. Seeing their asses are being handed to them, the ninjas just go all Al-Qaeda and shit, suicide bombing monks left and right. The main story involves Ching Wan. He's the badass swordsman with the Billy Ray Cyrus mullet who'd been chosen by China to fight in a duel to the death versus Japan's finest samurai warrior. The Japanese warrior chosen to fight is a young samurai named Hashimoto Kata. Not only is a super short Komodo totally stylish, but sporting something like that doesn't look creepy in the slightest, even when he's not wearing pants while intently watching these children. In all fairness, this guy's my favorite character in this movie, and, and this scene serves to establish that he's not a total dick, as shown here when he helps a young kendo practitioner win a kendo match against a bully. Not that it's my business, but maybe someone should teach this kid about stranger danger. If you've been touched that way, don't be ashamed. Tell someone you trust, like your parents, your doctor, your teacher, or counselor. Yee. Anyway, both warriors set off for their long journeys to a place called Holy Sword House, which is where this duel has taken place for years between China and Japan. Fearing that Chinese women won't be able to resist his sexy legs, Hashimoto finds these stylish pants to put on. And this totally sweet Lord Raiden hat. Also on a pilgrimage to Holy Sword House is this Chinese chick named Shang. She's supposed to be dressed as a boy, but to be honest, that's only made apparent through dialogue. Though I suppose I can see how things could get confusing. To help you better understand, this dude's dressed like a man. So is this guy. This chick's dressed like a man. And this chick is obviously dressed like a woman. Now that we better understand historical Chinese dress, Shang is a badass warrior in her own right, and she has it in her mind to challenge Hashimoto Kato herself to glorify her family name. She confronts him in the desert and tries to pick a fight, but he tells her he doesn't fight bitches. <laughs> that makes me sad. After being embarrassed by her vagina, Shang finds herself accosted by a group of pesky ninja on the same beach that the book ninjas went all kaboomy on earlier in the film. Ching Wan shows up and the two chase off the ninjas. After their victory, he asks why she's dressed like a boy. Then he's all like, sorry miss, but you didn't fool me. To which she replies, but I'm a boy! I go baby standing up! Then she gets all mad and storms off. <laughs> both warriors arrive to Holy Sword House at the same time. To both warriors' surprise, Shang is there, as she lives at Holy Sword House with her father. A romance begins to brew between Ching Wan and Shang. Personally, I think Shang would be all over Hashimoto if he would have gone with the whole pantless sex offender look, but he didn't, so she likes Ching Wan instead. Shang's father invites the two warriors to a dinner party, and during the party, one of the damn pesky ninjas is hiding in the attic. He attempts to poison Ching Wan with the old poison pee pee on a string technique, but it fails terribly. Me Chinese, me play joke, me put pee pee in your coke. The plot begins to thicken when it's revealed the Japanese monk accompanying Hashimoto is the leader of those pesky ninjas, causing all kinds of trouble throughout the film, including a plot hatched by the Shogun to kidnap all of China's best fighters. Like this guy who's tricked by the old tiny ninja titty trick. God damn tiny nuts. And this guy who's captured with the old kite riding ninja technique. Mm. 
The idea being, once Japan fully understands how Kung Fu works, they'll control China. Ching Wan and Hashimoto uncover the plot, however, and won't let a bunch of pesky ninjas get in the way of their duel to the death. So while Ching Wan battles scores of ninjas, Hashimoto catches up to the leader of the ninja. Two things can be learned here. Hashimoto is a badass, and Chinese filmmakers are fucking weird. Now that everyone that needed a killing is dead, the two can have their duel to the death. Holy fucking shit. It's a fucking lizard, motherfucker!